Sonoff released a camera the moment this video was published, assuming I did it right. But they sent it to me a week ago and I tested it. Not only did I set up and test this little thing, I also uncharacteristically recorded said testing, including the thing that might make this camera worth having, and the thing that makes it fall just short of grace. But you'll have to wait for that. Not just because I want there to be a small amount of anticipation, but also because of the chronological order of events, the way recording works, and my finely honed laziness. While I had some trouble getting the packaging to cooperate in any way, I'll chalk that up as some sort of temporary debuff on my dexterity. The packaging is fairly minimal and the information on the outside is clear and professional looking. Not a surprise, but it's a little too exact in representation, I feel. I'm not saying it's not good, but I am definitely partial to Sonoff's simplified, almost icon-like edge lines representations. I won't hold it against them, though, and if anyone from Sonoff is watching, please tell the person who designs the boxes like these that I appreciate their work. There's more thought and creativity in these than most people may think. In the box are two things, the camera and another small box that I didn't bother finessing. Inside the smaller box are four things, the nicely long USB cable, the instructions, a small twist lock mount, a pack of screws and wall dogs for the mount, and a sticker template of the mount's hole pattern. I admit I didn't really use the twist lock mount, but I am confident it would work just fine for reasons that will become clear when we look at the camera. Upon first examination, it looks like a lot of other pan tilt cameras. It is, after all, the best form for this sort of camera, but Sonoff made it unsurprisingly substantial. I have said this before in a couple different videos about Sonoff's stuff. They make good and sometimes even great hardware. I will definitely give them that. Other physical characteristics I appreciate in most Sonoff kit, including this camera, are tight mechanicals. This camera moves very silently and smoothly. Of course, the most important thing about any pan tilt camera is the camera part. But let's talk about setting up the device first. You do need to use the EWE Link app, at least for initial setup. All you need to do is pop into the app, hit the plus button in the upper right, tap scan, and then scan the little QR code on the bottom of the device. It'll show you the device with some information about all the things. Scroll down and hit Add Device. It will instruct you to plug in the device, which I've done already, then hit Done. You'll be asked to reset the device by holding in this button next to the SD card slot I haven't mentioned yet and tapping Next. That slot is a key point of interest, one of the ones I foreshadowed so cleverly in the beginning of the video. Okay, after five seconds, it should go into a discoverable state and the light will blink the pattern shown in the app. If it doesn't match, try again until it does. There are several pairing states, so you may have to do this two or three times. If it does, or when it does, tap yes. The app will ask for a Wi-Fi network for the camera. If you've selected it for other devices, the app will also happily show the previous password in plain text, so don't do this in front of anyone or a camera. It will connect almost instantly, and now you can assign a room, or name it if you like, then hit Done. Now it's on the home screen of the app, and you can start using it. You can live view if you tap the play icon, and you can, of course, pan and tilt. Again, I must say that the motion of this camera is butter smooth. It does, however, suffer a major affliction similar to the IP cameras of old. The command delay, which makes the camera start moving moments after pressing and stop the same amount of time after you've released. I thought I would miss the zoom function, but the field of view is more or less perfect, even for a large room or oddly shaped one. The image quality isn't perfect, but it's definitely good enough for any practical use of this device, and perhaps even a couple impractical ones I may do a different video on. If that sort of thing interests you, let me know in the usual ways. Comments, posts, messages, or smoke signals. Now let's talk about one of those foreshadowed items. The feature that I like most about this camera is the RTSP and OnVIF capability. Open the settings for the camera and then tap the three dots in the upper right. Scroll until you get to more settings and tap that. Here you can access a few oddly grouped settings, one of which being the OnVIF and RTSP settings. 
If you only have RTSP, you need to do a firmware update and you'll see ONVIF after. Adding the camera to Home Assistant is also surprisingly fast and the stream quality is again good enough for the practical. Once you've set your camera up through the app, you can leave it connected or isolated on a different network or VLAN. And yes, it will still work with Home Assistant as long as the Home Assistant host machine is on the same network or VLAN. There's another feature that makes me happy, but let's talk for a moment about a thing that I found disturbing. That micro SD card slot next to the reset button. First, it has this little indentation where you would assume you could catch the raised edge of the card but you would be wrong. The raised edge goes the other way for some reason. This probably wouldn't even be worth mentioning if it wasn't for the fact that I had to insert and remove two different cards a few different times before I could record onto one. If you go into the camera settings and scroll until you find local recording and click that, you'll see options for recording locally. There's continuously looping video recording that records over its own tail once it's as big as the capacity can hold, or event recording that records a video anytime there's motion or an event from the app is fired. Initially, when I cleared and formatted the card, the camera would just tell me it was full or corrupt and I needed to format it. When I told it to format it, it told me it worked and showed normal health, but zero gig of space. And if I backed out and went back into the recording settings, it would tell me it was corrupt again. Eventually, I discovered that the camera would only accept FAT32 formatted cards. I suppose it also may accept FAT16, but I didn't test that because that would be dumb. Okay, back to the good stuff, or normal stuff. The infrared night vision, for instance, works as well as any other similar camera of good quality. You can also enable motion tracking, which is very accurate and smooth, especially given another fact I'll talk about in a moment. First, there are a few more things in the app I want to cover, and they're all on this bar at the bottom of the camera screen. You can access saved video or events from the camera's SD card, use the intercom functionality, or toggle sound. Slide to the second set of options, and you can take a snapshot or video recording, which are saved on your phone, and access those through the album. You can also access your cloud stuff if you pay for a subscription, or set off the camera's alarm mode, which I did not test because I did the same on their Cam S2, and it was extraordinarily loud. On the next set, you have Device Event and Sleep. Device Event allows you to use other sensor devices connected to the app to trigger camera events, but I don't have any sawn-off sensors. Sleep is pretty neat. When you activate this, the camera homes both axes, tucking the camera sensor down towards the body. I suppose you can at least be assured there's no video feed, but if you're concerned about potential eavesdropping, the microphone may still be bothering you. I think the most practical approach here is to simply not put the camera where you don't want a camera. So how do I feel about this camera overall? Well, I feel pretty good about it thanks to the SD card finally working, the motion tracking, and the OnVIF and RTSP capability. And here's the best part. I haven't even told you the price. As of right now, Sonoff is selling this pan tilt camera for $25. So not only is it a sturdy built little camera with handy features and workable local control, it's a sturdy built little camera with handy features and workable local control for $25. I have to give Sonoff credit for giving me two cameras now that are worth talking about. I don't normally talk about cameras because I'm not hunting for 16K cameras with a 720 degree field of vision and AI built in that can readily identify cars, pets, humans, or certain species of penguins from Patagonia. I have some cameras and they're okay, but they're not unique in ways that matter to me. The two little cheap cameras that Sonoff has sent me though are a good bargain, especially for someone just trying to add a little extra smarts to their apartment or to their home without a bunch of fuss or expense. I want to point out that while Sonoff sent me this camera to try and review on its release, I have no written agreement with them, nor did they coerce me in any way to give a favorable review. I would never enter into such an agreement. Now, I'd like to thank all viewers, subscribers, members, and attentive telepaths for your minutes. 
We are all allotted an unknown limited supply of minutes and you've spent some of yours with me. I really do appreciate that. Time is the greatest gift anyone can give. And I hope you'll spend a little bit more with me next time as I continue examining Smarter Circuits. Thank you.